the Kansas City Chiefs are linked to some free agents and also a big trade with the Cleveland Browns. Steve, let's talk about it. We're all chiefed up and we're back with another podcast for that ass. Make sure to hit that like button for us. And also, if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, what are you waiting for? Help us out. Hit that subscribe button. We're trying to get to 30K subs as soon as possible. Mike, what kind of trade targets are they talking about for the Chiefs? This is strange. It's a wild one. Um, last word on sports.com says Chiefs Browns connected in trade for a first round tackle. David Latham, managing editor, he says the Chiefs and the Browns are connected in Jack Conklin trade talks. As things currently stand, the Kansas City Chiefs have Wanye and rookie Kingsley Suamataea battling for the starting left tackle job. While these players hold some long-term promise, they're both anything but proven commodities. Morris struggled in limited work last year, while Sua Mataia is completely untested and might need time to adjust to NFL speeds. He goes on to say, Kansas City is looking to win their third Super Bowl in as many seasons, and Jack Conklin trade would help them accomplish that goal, Steve. What do you think about Jack Conklin trade to Kansas City? I think it's very, very freaking unnecessary. Mike, we just spent a second-round draft pick on a left tackle. We had Wanya Morris, who, by the way, I didn't think he struggled when he had to start last year. I think it was typical rookie stuff. Like, he didn't look that bad. Like I've said a million times, wasn't much of a drop-off from Donovan Smith when he was hurt. I just think this is crazy. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the Jack Conklin, uh, the Jack Conklin idea or the trade. Uh, they were actually rumoring to do this when he was back all the way with the Titans, and then he went to the Browns last year. He ended the whole season, first game of the season, on an uh, ACL tear. So, do I want to trade all this for a guy coming off an ACL injury? This doesn't make any sense. I don't see the point. We drafted the young guns. Let them play a little bit. I'm not understanding any of this about bringing in new blood before Kingsley even gets a chance to get on the field and make contact. We're not, we're in the non-contact phases right now. Like, why are we bringing somebody else in? It's always the people on the outside looking in that have these crazy trade ideas for the Chiefs. Because... In Chiefs Kingdom, we understand that we're okay at left tackle. Yeah, they're not proven, but we know that they're pretty decent players and that we can get the best out of them with Andy Heck, right? Yes. Just like other positions, and I'm sure we're going to talk about another one here in a minute, but everyone from the outside looking in thinks that we're missing something. I think this team is more put together and more solid than last year. Yeah, we're not missing anything. I I don't know why they keep doing that. And to bring it into the next one, Chiefs tied to a perennial pro bowler uh, here a Legereus needs replacement. Uh, before I get to it, why do we need to have a Legereus need replacement? That's exactly what I was talking about, man. I like, could have told you it was going to be corner. Right. It, it's a corner. What's the point? Uh, it is Patrick Peterson. That's who they're wanting to bring in. Patrick Peterson. He played last year with the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. He's played with the Vikings. He's played with the Cardinals, Steve. Uh, I'll, I'll bring up his stuff just so we can all see it. He's 34 years old and three months. 6-1-2-0-3, he ran a 4-3-1 all the way back in 2006 or whenever he got drafted. And come on, it was 2011, 2011. Now look, I was one that was like, dude, we don't need an aging Patrick Peterson. This is stupid. He's probably not even good anymore. Now I did go look and, and I found his stats and, and he was fine last year. He was targeted 60 times. He gave up 31 receptions, only 51.7% reception percentage. That's actually third or fourth highest. I'm not for sure. I can't go down there and look. He's played since Noah and the, the biblical days. <laughs> so, I, I mean, you go down the list and that's one of his highest years. He only allowed 388 yards. Okay. Like it wasn't horrible. You bring up his PFF stats. He had a 61.4 coverage grade and you're like, that's kind of crappy. But for Patrick Peterson to be a, Basically, people talking about him like he's a Hall of Fame kind of guy. He's only got four or five years over the 82 coverage grade on PFF. So it just shows how hard it is to uh, score high on PFF coverage grades. But why do we need to go out and bring in a Patrick Peterson when we drafted Kamal Haddon, who's looking okay? Kelvin Joseph's looking okay. You've got all these guys, Josh Williams, Jalen Watson, Naze's coming back, Steve, Trent McDuffie. Why bring in old blood to come in and take snaps away from these young kids that need to be learning and progressing? Well, very simply, Mike, they're not going to freaking do it. There's no way Brett Veach goes for that. Like, I could see them come more going and getting a left tackle just to have assurance on in that position. I don't see this happening on cornerback at all. We've talked about time and time again, how are they even going to get all these guys on the roster? Because 
There's only so many roster spots, and there is a boatload of freaking defensive backs on this team that could make a 53-man roster. We're talking about, like, how are we going to get our rookie we drafted in the fifth, sixth round, whatever it was with Kamal Haddon, yeah. onto this roster? And it's kind of hard to do already. Why would we ever go get a guy right. that, that graduated high school when I did? <laughs> you know, old. basically. Like, That's I mean... Old. Thing, he's a little his, younger than me, but how's his back even going to hold up at this point? Like you have it's horrible not, back dude. issues. It's not happening. It's not. He wakes up every morning and feels like shit, Mike. I'll t- I'll tell you that right now. He don't feel good. He's old. The only he's thing achy. makes him feel better is to come over to the Chiefs and win himself a ring, a big old fat ring. But guess what? If he's over here, it's a liability to win the ring. Well, Patrick Peterson don't have a ring, I don't think. So exactly. I mean, maybe he could try. I'll tell you what. I'll take Patrick Peterson if he plays for free. But we'll take him. You've got to have you know, something like that. I'm not paying him big money to come in and steal a spot from a kid like Kamal. We've seen it last year with Khalif Hallisey. We had to get rid of him, and then he goes off to the Browns and How much would he play if he was here? That's my thing. Like, as old as he is and decrepit, he's going to be hurt all the time. Like, okay, but other than that, Mike, even if they don't pay him a lot, say he took a ridiculously team-friendly deal and you, you could get him for next to nothing in a trade or whatever – what what is he really contributing? Like, how many snaps is he actually going to play over the guys that are probably better than him that are younger? I don't let him play hardly at all. I'm right. under the assumption that Naze gets to come back and play more this year. Josh Williams needs to play more. Jalen Will- Jalen Watson needs to play more. Even if Kelvin Joseph makes the team, he needs to play more. Kamal Haddon, whoever. We've got to start looking at the young Keep guys. Keep on going, and man. Echo Boy Doe. Right. You got the the other kid, Battle. I mean, there's so yeah. many pieces. Miles Battle. And people don't even talk about. And then we're talking about Tremari Connor playing the slot. That's something that Spagnuolo Hicks talking will be able about. to do that. Justin Reed's going to be able to do that. We do there not need Patrick way, Peterson. Way too many young, good pieces in our defensive back room to even worry about this old dude. Steve, Jack Conklin or Patrick Peterson, which one would you prefer? Jack if they had Conklin, to make one? I already said that. If, if you had to do one of them, I think that one makes more sense. I could understand the team being a little skeptical about young guys keeping Patrick Mahomes' blind side locked down, right? Yeah. Like, that that's your freaking franchise quarterback. He's already won you three Super Bowls, and he's got a long way to go. Jack Conklin's so the right it, tackle, though. Oh, hell, it doesn't matter. We don't ever get left tackles to play left tackle anyway. That's we'll true. go get every right tackle we can get. Orlando Brown Jr., Juwan Taylor, you name it. Even Wayne Morris was a right tackle. Like, it, it's insane. Right. But I just think with Kingsley coming in, man, I, I think that he has all the tools if they can get them all together, and I think Andy Heck can do that, I think we're going to be fine in the left tackle spot. <clears throat> hey, ye, hey, ye. it's time for Beyond the Kingdom. Beyond the Kingdom. <laughs> this is a segment, Steve, where we go outside of Chiefs Kingdom and we look around at the NFL as a whole and we look at it from a Chiefs perspective. So the first one we were look at, look at today was something we talked about last time, Brandon McManus being uh, hit with some charges and this and that <laughs> and some ac- accusations rather. But the Commanders have released him, Steve. It's breaking the Washington <laughs> Commanders have went ahead and released him before there has been court, before there has been anything brought up at any point of course, except for hearsay. Man. Steve, of what do course. you think about it? They don't want the mob coming after them with their pitchforks. They see what happened to Get people like Bucker. They see what happens to everybody else. They see what happened to Matt Ariza. Like, it's just the same thing. Like, I don't know what happened with Brandon McManus. I'm not saying he didn't do anything wrong, but we have no freaking clue. No one knows, and you're already cutting the guy. Like, what are we doing? Everybody's got to quit bound to the mob and just freaking right. wait. Due Dude, process. It's getting ridiculous, bro. Tell the mob to go screw themselves. Nobody cares. Yeah, suck do it. Do what you want to do. Suck it. Whatever. But look, if McManus <laughs> finds out that he's guilty, that's when he should go. But you shouldn't do it beforehand. If they come out and say, look, he wasn't going to make the team anyway. We're just going to get rid of him. We don't like the negative press. That's okay. fine. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm dealing with that. But if he like, sure- I feel like that with the Isaiah Bugs, right? Like, right. If, if you think there's even a chance that he actually did that and he's not a big part of the team, then cut him and just save face, right? I get that. But whatever. 100% moving on. Eagles wide receiver John Ross. Wait a second. Eagles wide receiver John. That's so stupid. <laughs> oh, John Ross is back in the news, baby. He says, uh, the day I retired, I knew it was a mistake. I wanted to read you some of this. I never wanted to leave football, Ross said. I'm going to read it like Ross. I never wanted to leave football. I think I was just at a point in my life where I had a lot going on. And literally, the day I retired, I knew it was a mistake. And then there's so much more that I'm not going to read, Steve. That sounds mean that you're making fun of this guy, you know, really opening up. But let's I'm be not honest. Making fun here. of him? I'm just saying. John look. Ross retired last year because he didn't want to go through Andy Reid's right. camp. 
He didn't want to burn in hell in St. Joseph. That's that's all there is to it. It's so hot. It's so hot. Steve, if you couldn't beat our sorry-ass wide receivers last year in that group we had, what makes you think you're coming back to the NFL and getting on any team at this point? Look, I'm all for the guy doing what he wants to do, and if he really wants to succeed at football, I, I understand he's at a rocky road, right? Because he was, first of all, he they reached on him. Like, once yeah. again, teams got horny over some speed, and they went crazy. Horned. And who better to do it than the Bengals? Yeah. That, Steve, look, again, I'm going to say it one more time. If you couldn't find your way onto the field, if you were getting your ass whooped by that receiving core we had last year. That's an epic You failure. are in for a... A, a rude awakening. <laughs> Mike, that's like being a, a, a full grown adult that that's you know had a good career, and you go to McDonald's and you can't even make the crew. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't even get you can't even be the guy that puts the fries in and takes them. You're out. losing. You're losing to uh to one eyed Billy over here. Oh, GD yeah. Billy, and he yeah, can't he quit even, school in the eighth grade. He can't even remember put salt on the fries, Steve. And, he's and got John, a. He's got a. He's got a septum ring and green curly hair, and he says, bruh. Bruh. <laughs> Not even going to fill these fries up. Moving on, <laughs> moving on. Uh, Ravens' Lamar Jackson forfeits 750 k in workout bonuses per report. Now, I wanted to bring this up because the report was Mike Florio, oh, pro Florio. football talk. And then let's go on to what Florio <laughs> says. <laughs> Mike Florio. that Jackson's contract include a condition where he must participate in 80% of offseason season off-season workouts to earn the 750k bonus excluding a course uh, mandatory mini camp he has reportedly already missed too many sessions however and, and we'll go ahead and put this at the end of the article after signing a 260 million dollar deal he's probably going to be okay you think you think florio like what are you talking about this doesn't, guy doesn't this kind of stuff just make the average everyday human just hate everything like absolutely hate everything. But come on, I mean, who, think about it. who writes an article like this, knowing that oh, the Mike dude Glory signed a two hundred and sixty. Right. I mean, he's an idiot. But now think about that for a minute. In, in a time where you can't get one singular bag of groceries at the grocery store for less than one hundred and fifty bucks, this <laughs> dude, this dude can literally skip a couple workouts because he's tired or he's playing Call of Duty. Yeah. And just throw away almost a million dollars. Like that's how lopsided. Say, that's how yeah. lopsided this country is, bro. I thought you were gonna say a couple bags of groceries for 150k. <laughs> Are you kidding? No, I buy I buy groceries for seven people. I understand right now that you can you're not getting a less than a hundred dollar bag of groceries unless you just fill it with ramen, maybe. Lamar Jackson, breaking news: Lamar Jackson gives up 750k. Yeah, well, nobody cares <laughs> if Lamar Jackson give up 750k, bro. <laughs> he made 260 million dollars, Flory Hole. Nobody cares. What a non-story right there, Steve. Moving on, we've talked about John Ross. We've talked about McManus. Last one of the day. This is a little better. This is a little better. It's about uh, Drew Brees. He's in the news. He said, Drew Brees, if not for arm woes. I could have probably played longer, which, I mean, that's kind of given, right? He says, honestly, man, if my right arm was still working, I probably would have played another three years. Uh, he said Thursday, my body feels great. My body can play. My right arm can't. Unfortunately, that's what kind of forced me to step away, and it was time to. Steve, I actually wow. like Drew Brees as a quarterback. I thought he's a good dude all around. I think he played the, the game. If he plays for another three years, does he win another Super Bowl in those three years or no? No, 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 I don't think so. When did he retire? Mahomes was still around, right? Like he'd already got here. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. So he wasn't going to win anymore. And you know, who would have thought that a right-handed quarterback couldn't compete with a bad right arm? I would have never thought anything, but you know, what's funny about you Breaking bringing up news. this Drew, this, you bringing up this Drew Brees story. So I was watching undercover boss. Yeah. And uh, what is that chain? There's like a sports bar chain. Uh, I can't think of the name of it right now, but it's like down south. But anyway, Drew Brees is is bought into it. Like he's part owner. Yeah. And he actually, they fixed him up in all the mask and everything. And he got to go in and see how they were doing things, you know. But he blew his cover, like right at the end of it. Like he couldn't, couldn't even do that. Drew Brees. Oh, they fixed him up pretty good. He didn't look like him. Did he wear eye black? Uh, yes, he did. No, 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 no. So he looked older and he had long hair. I don't know. It was weird. You just have to go watch it. I'll do that.
That time's yours. Time's yours, Steve. Time's not mine. Time's, Time's not Chief's mine. Kingdom. Time's Chief's Kingdom. I love saying that. I love the. I love the response. Uh, we threw up some more polls. We're doing the polls. I'm loving the polls. So we're bringing them out, Steve. Mike, I threw you're this horned one up. up on these polls. Yeah, horned up on the poll. Um, <laughs> this one is a brand new poll. It's a baby poll, if you will. It was released this morning at the time of this recording. Only has 1.4 thousand views, and most of these get four and five thousand. So I wanted to bring it up just to sh- to to show what's happening. So one point four k people voted on this bad boy, huh? That's it. That's it. The the rest of them's got right. tons more. So it's in the early stages. But I asked, how many sacks will George Karloftis get in 2024, Steve? Do you want to take a guess on what people said? One through four, five through eight, nine through twelve, or thirteen plus? For Furious I think George. you know. I think they're going to try to be realistic, or you know, or they think they are, and go with nine to twelve. But I would go thirteen plus, baby. George Carter Loftus is on an upward tw- uh, trend. I mean, is he not? Ooh. He was a beast. He was a beast his rookie season plus. last year. He got into double digits, baby. This year he goes thirteen plus. Mike, what makes you think that he's going to go backwards? Hey. Chiefs Kingdom says 9 to 12, 62%. Called it. But 13 plus at 11%, that's not like a bad He's going, he's going to do it, baby. He's going to uh, do it. More people do think he would go from 5 to 8 than over 12. I, I think I don't, George Karloftis goes back? No, he's not going to go backwards. Uh, this is a guy that has potentially the best work ethic on the entire team. You've seen how much this guy wants to win. You've seen how much this guy wants to get better. He wants to succeed. He does whatever he has to do. He talks to whoever he has to talk to and work with whoever he has to work with to get better. He's not going backwards, baby. 100%. Our boy Brian Parrott says GK is a sexy beast. All horned up for GK. he would be horned over that one. Uh, Flatland Clip says he's going to go crazy, baby. He's he going is, crazy. D one Devin says at least ten plus. He almost hit twelve last season. Big improvements. Hoping Felix pans out, Steve. And this is another thing. Hundred percent. We talk about George a lot. Uh, we want Felix to pan out. I think if both of these two can get together, and it all starts with uh, our boy Chris Jones in the middle, in my opinion. Uh, Donna Cochran says furious George, with Chris Jones predicting twenty. George is going to go wild too. Thirteen plus iron sharpens iron, Steve. What do you think about it? That's right where I'm at with it, man. I think they can all go crazy this year. But like I said, George Karloftis' work ethic is through the roof. The guy wants to win. He wants to be good. He wants to be the best he can be. And, Mike, he started out – some called it slow, but I don't. I mean, I know he's a first-round pick, but he still had a good rookie season. Last year, even better. He was a beast last year. He disrupted so many plays he didn't even get home on. And then this year, he's going to keep getting better, man. I think 13 could definitely be in his sights. Uh, Yeah, I agree. I'm gonna go with you. I think he. I think the Greek freak, baby. I don't think 13's not not doable. Uh, here we go. Moving on. How many sacks is Chris Jones gonna get? This one had five point eight thousand. Five <laughs> times the amount of the George Karloftis Steve smash sub get horned. They're gonna go with this one. I can't do it right now. They're gonna go eleven to fifteen. Man, you know, is it? You can you really just say twenty? Twenty is insane. Yep, eleven See, to fifteen. Mike, they, they always have to. They don't want to sound stupid. They're like, you want to you know be what? a homer, right? I, I'm real horned up right now, but I don't want to look like I'm gonna to prematurely explode. So I got to hold back a little bit. Hold back and say eleven to fifteen. Steve Chris says twenty plus. <laughs> Jones wades in. Steve he says twenty plus. Uh, of that's all he does. there is to it. He says twenty plus. Let's see Love what the it. kingdom said. I'm not sleepy. He says he gets double teamed way too much for twenty sacks. People, let's be real. <laughs> Uh, Man, he, I mean, true. he's got close. I mean, last what do you have last year? He had around the 15 mark, right? Or was that the year before? Right. Is it what what would be his uh dude, look how good Chris Jones looks. After signing this big contract, though, doesn't he have to get in there and do something great? Like, what would it be? 17, 17 well, and a half would be his record? Uh, that's the thing. If we can get 15 out of Chris Jones, that's a win because most people, after they sign that big fat contract, they slow down a little bit. But he's not in a position to do so. The way that Brett Veach set right. it up. He's still got to go out and perform. I don't think Chris Jones is that type of guy anyway. I honestly believe that Chris Jones hits double digits this year, and I believe he does what he's supposed to do. Um, Oh, yeah, for sure. I think this is Lewis. Every time it says a big L, but it just puts a user. But but (laughs) then I read. If you take off everything except for L in the first five, it just says loser. (laughs) Right. Well, Lewis. 
I'm always wondering if it's Lewis or not, and then I realize I just have to read the comment, and it says Lewis, he has no you, help in the center of the you, line. What's YouTube trying to tell us here, Lewis? I don't know, man. <laughs> but Lewis could be right. He had, doesn't have a lot of help there. Um, Yogi, Yogi said, I'd love to see 20 plus, shout out Yogi, but I won't put my money on it just yet. On the other hand, if any defensive tackle can do it, it's big schlong Joe. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Oh. Boom shakalaka with the schlong. Look. Big Schlong Jones saying, uh, I thought he was giving the finger right here, but he wasn't. He's giving the one going forward. Uh, last thing, Ron White says, get horned. What the F does that mean? Get it together, Ron White. Where have you been at? Come on, Ron. Get he obviously haven't been here. It means horn up on the Chiefs, all chiefed up, all kinds of good stuff. Horned up on that three-peat. Here we go. Uh, opinion time. <laughs> Is it concerning the Chiefs' kingdom that Kadarius Tony has not yet shown up to a voluntary off-season OTA session? Four thousand votes on this one, Steve. Where do you think they're going? They're going to go, yeah, but it's voluntary. But I would go one hundred and ten percent yes, in my opinion. Like with coming off the season that he came off of, he needs to be doing everything he can do. They oh, said cut oh, him. I didn't even see that option, or I'd have probably went with it because Chiefs' kingdom hates him right now. Nine percent says cut him already. Um, D Money says real. Chiefs fans, Steve, know he deserves a redemption year. The fake ones don't. Especially after yeah. helping us with our three Super Bowl <laughs> wins in franchise history. Or maybe he meant our third Super Bowl win in franchise history. Yeah, yeah, that's what he meant. But, okay. you know, that's the thing. I think anyone that looks at it logically, right? Like, first of all, most fans are not going to do that. Kadari Tony sucked last year, cut him. That's, that's what they're going to say. Right. Uh, now, if it was a pattern and he had sucked for years in a row, like MVS, and yes, by all means, cut him. Get rid of him already. But if you look at it, you have to chill a little bit. You have to horn down a little bit, if you will. Yeah. And you look at it and you're like, look, this guy's on a rookie hey, contract. Take a cold shower. Yeah, take a cold shower and look at it, you know? And, and you know, after after things slow down a little bit, you, you look and you see that this guy's ceiling is ridiculously high. Uh, he runs routes like crazy. He's super fast. So many freaking tools. And then you look back a little bit further, Mike. Last year, he couldn't catch the ball. That was his big thing, right? Yeah. A wide it's receiver, not been that way. A wide receiver with the Achilles heel of catching a football. But it's not. It's just for one season. Go prior to that. He never had a problem catching the ball. He never had a drop problem in college. I think he dropped zero in college. Like, it's insane. And he didn't do that with the Giants. He didn't do it in the first year with the Chiefs. It happened last year. He had a bad year. So I think you have to look at it logically and be like, hey, I understand. There's two things I don't like about Kadarius Tony, Mike. And that these are the two things I worry about, not him dropping the ball. His music? One, no. One, it's just focus. Like, you got to focus on your craft. This is your career. Focus on it. Get better at it. Kind of like Gronkowski said. If you love football, correct the mistakes. Right. Get it right. Number two, the injury history. He's so freaking fragile, bro. Like, he's literally made of glass. So you have to be careful with that, too. And I do think that he's one injury, injury away from them being like, you know what? Yeah, screw it. We're cutting him. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, Enterprise NCC says it is voluntary, correct? It would concern yes, me if it, it were is. mandatory, but not voluntary. Um, I think the reason it concerns people for That's being voluntary. Concerning. Yes, it's because we all know that this is the worst pitcher Kadarius Tony I've ever seen. But <laughs> we also know that Kadarius Tony. <laughs> was billed to be something he was last season that he just was not. And and I don't care what it is. He's at a point in his the career where he needs, to him. he needs to build some wins here. And you can't build small wins without even showing up first. I think we can all agree. Right. And that's where this right. last one comes in. Glenn White says, dude needs all the practice he can get. Glenn, you're right. Steve, he's a, right. Like This dude needs it, to practice. It's two different things. It's two different things. Like, yeah, of course he needs all the practice he can get, but it's also a perspective thing. Mike, I've talked about this before. It's it's perspective. It's it's how people are seeing it from an outside lens. So Kadarius Tony, he might think I'm fine. I had I had issues last year, but I'm okay. Right. Like, okay, and I'm, it's cool if you have that confidence because I think that's a big thing he's lacking. I think last year, like you said, they hyped him up to be something he's not, and he collapsed under the pressure. So if he's got the confidence back, that that's goes a long way in him actually getting back to normal. But at the same time, it's like you have to take these small steps to prove to people like Chiefs Kingdom and like your coaching staff and your GM and everybody else that you're taking this seriously and that you're going to do everything you can in your power to get better and get back to normal and, and get to your top level. And he's not doing it. 
Well said, Steve. And with that, that's all we got for today. Thanks for liking, subscribing, clicking that bell. We'll catch you next time. Go Chiefs.